Now, when you look at this, you're probably going to freak out. But I want to underscore the fact that I've been presenting this material very simply just to get your feet wet. But the actual material, the proof of what I'm talking about, is rather extensive. I've spent eight years on it. And what you see before you now is Luke Dateline Meters. It's You capitalize Luke and Dateline and Meters. You run the words together. And then you put in a period at the end of Meters. And then you can type in HTM or Doc or PDF to get to see it. If you use HTM or Doc, you're going to have to download the fonts for the Greek because there's Greek in here um, from BibleWorks.com backslash fonts and somewhere in here that link is going to be provided because this is a very extensive piece of material this is the sort of master syllabus of all the research I've done and each one of these underlined things is a link to each of the books that I have abstracted so far. And here's the Old Testament, Genesis, Psalm 90, Isaiah 53, Daniel 9. And then this is technically in the New Testament, but the occurrence of the event is still in Old Testament times, so Magnificat and Zechariah. All these are metered, like I started to describe, only there's a lot more to it than I'm telling you right now. Okay? Then here's the New Testament, Matthew, and then you go over here. It's in chronological order based on these little orange things telling you when they're written. Like Galatians. This is A.D. 49. 49 is used as an A.D. They have their own Anno Domini in the New Testament. We use A.D. They use A.D. The trouble is, is there's a two to three year variance between theirs and and ours and we're sort of familiar with that what we're not familiar with is why that variance exists I will cover that at another time if you can't wait to find out then there are um, how God orchestrates time right in here you click on that link and you're, you'll find out some more about it all right I don't want to overburden you with all this detail, but it's kind of important to let you know that it exists. So take a second and look at that. I got to go get something. Now, you will be able to download this. Um, even though I told you what the address is, because you can just type it in Google and find it. You'll be able to download this. And the important thing, see all these orange numbers? The thing that I wanted to do, and I'm going to show you in a minute why it's so important, is I wanted to find out. Remember in the last video I showed you a 49, a 63, and an 84, and I told you what they meant. What they meant is based on Genesis and Psalm 90. What's not included in here is the Matthew 24 material. So when you see those same numbers in another Bible book, the idea is that another passage with the same syllable count is in view as a cross-reference. And to give you an idea of just how clever this is, we're going to look at one of these right now. That's why I'm using this piece. Acts, Book of Acts. All right, let me make it bigger because now you'll be able to see it. Hello? It didn't work the right way. Okay, this is Acts 1 through 3. Dateline meter means the first time. See, here's our 40. You're not supposed to do that. The first time, I, I'm afraid to click on it now. The first time 
You see this 49 in the middle on the far right? 49. Well, that's the 49 we saw in Matthew 24, 2, which was playing on Daniel 9, 4. And in both cases, it was the first time that the text in cumulative, cumulative, up here at the top left, top right, cumulative. The first time it, it, the syllable count is divisible by seven, that's your first date line. There are generally two. The second date line in this one is 105, which I haven't explained and I won't. And you'll notice that down here in the lower right-hand corner is our familiar 119, which is the second date line in Genesis 1. You see how these numbers make it easier for you to track and cross-reference scripture? Because you probably remember what I just told you. The 49, you remember, oh, that's Matthew 24, 2, where Christ says, and that's what I'm going to stress in this video, where Christ says, and he answered and said, which, like, how can those words be important? But then when we looked at Daniel 9, 4, which also at the syllable 49 count, was about hearing God's commandments. So in both cases, the, the play, the, the tie, is that Christ is speaking, he's God, and he's giving you, like, orders, he's giving you truth, he's giving you something you should listen to and obey for your own sake. And he's using 49 to do it, and 49 is a kind of unhappy number. It's the number of sabbatical years that Israel missed, starting with Rehoboam for 430 years, and then the temple went down. So when the 49 years were up, then the temple could start to be rebuilt, and that's why Daniel's praying in Daniel 9-4, because he knows that time is up, and he's praying at the start of the 49th year. But in Matthew 24, 2, 49 was used by Christ as a dateline because he's speaking in 30 AD and 49 years prior to when he talks, 49 years prior, that was when the second temple was being rebuilt by Herod. And the topic in Matthew 24, 2 was about the temple being taken down a second time. So now when you're looking at the book of Acts in verse 2 and you see the 49 again, the first thing you're going to think of is, oh, that's the same thing as Matthew 24, 2, and that was 30 A.D. So then this must be 30 A.D. Yep. But then you have the next question. Oh, but Luke isn't writing in 30 A.D. Ding, 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 ding. If this is supposed to be a dateline, Luke is not writing in 30 A.D. Luke wasn't even a Christian then. So what does the 49 mean now? And this is the cleverness of the text. I've seen this time and again. They like to play a game they call equidistance. And that's what you're looking at here with this 49. Luke is definitely using the 49 because this is 30 A.D. when Christ says the same thing that we saw related in the text of Daniel and we saw in Matthew. The text in Greek, if you just go look it up in your English Bible or your translation, it says, until the days of the commandments to the apostles. And this is a really weirdly worded phrase. Because it's like, that's not usually the way the Greek would do it. They wouldn't say that first. He's reversing the order. And I don't know quite why he's doing that yet, so I'm not going to try and explain that. But, 49, when he's talking to the apostles, you can read it in your English. You know that Christ is talking to them after he rose. Which was just, you know, three days after. Okay. Three days after he died, not rose, but he, he's back on earth and he's talking to the apostles. So it's still 30 AD. So this 49 is really apt. At that time, it was still 49 years prior was still when Herod was rebuilding the second temple. But Luke is writing 
his dateline when Christ would have been 49 years old. Now, most of the scholars can tell you, they're going to vary a lot, but they'll tell you that Luke was writing the book of Acts while he traveled with Paul. So it's not too hard to understand that kind of like Stephen King wrote The Green Mile as a serial novel, so Luke is writing each part of Acts as they go through their day. It's like a journal. Okay? So Luke is writing, he's starting the journal when Christ would have been 49 years old. And it's really tempting to sit there and say, oh, well, that must be 49 A.D., well, maybe it is and maybe it isn't. Okay, it might be 46 AD. Because there's a three-year variance that's, that's a problem owing to something in the Roman calendar which has never been fixed. Okay, that I don't really have time to explain now. Just know that the Bible's way of dating this would say that it was that Christ was age 49 which in our minds means it has to be 49 AD it might actually be 46 AD in our BC AD because we have three year difference all right and that's why we say Christ was born at the end of 4 BC so if you moved all the numbers up and you can't always do this to get your other dates right but if you moved all the numbers up 3 then yeah Christ would be 49. It'd be 49 AD. But you can't say he died in 33 AD. You have to keep using 30. And one day I'll, I'll try to explain that. But I devoted a whole channel to this problem called PATU. P-A-T-U. It's in YouTube and it's also in Vimeo. Okay. But the big thing here to note is Christ would have been 49 when Luke writes. And so he's playing on that equidistance, the same value of the number. To say, yeah, and at the same time I'm writing in 48, for when Christ would have been 49, it was really, see, you got the 19, that's your big tip off. It was really 19 years ago, okay, in 30 AD. And it's kind of a ha-ha for the Greek reader. And you know that he's tying it because... This word here, I wonder if I'll be able to do this without it going bad. Well, you can't see it because it's in a stupid blue. Adobe really doesn't do right with the colors. It's en te la menos. That's the verb form of entole, which means commandments. He's giving commandments. Tois apostolois. To the apostles. Okay? So he's giving them commandments. In other words, before he died, two weeks before he died, Matthew 24 and 25 occurred. Now he's risen, you know, risen as far as he's resurrected and on earth. He hasn't yet risen to heaven. He's risen and he's talking to them before he goes to heaven over what? The 40 days. And the 40 days is right here. So this book is going to starts out with what Christ says before he goes to heaven, what he says to the apostles. So it's a journal. He's, it's a, he's compiling a journal of what happens while it happens. Okay? He's writing after the fact. This particular chapter he's writing after the fact. 19 years after the fact. Okay? Isn't this clever? Now, the other thing here, and he's got a unique dating system about it. And I've, I've, the way I phrased it here, I don't think this is right anymore, but I'm going to leave it in place. That was my old idea about the dateline. I don't think it's right anymore. But, see, 49, I just explained that. Now, remember when Christ used 63? Luke is using 64, and technically speaking, on a Jewish fiscal year, Passover was at the beginning of the year. The Lord dies on Passover, which they had two Passovers, actually. The official one that they celebrated was started on a Saturday, 
Okay, that's why he rises on a Saturday. That's why we celebrate Easter on Sunday. But technically, it should have been four days later, but the Sanhedrin didn't properly intercalate. They missed four days. It's a joke that's told in the book of John in the Greek in John 18 at the end of it. I don't have time to go through that right now. But technically, it was at the beginning of the year, in Jewish fiscal year. So technically speaking, at the beginning of the year, it was 64 years until the beginning of the millennium had there been no church. So this is another ha-ha. And what really makes that important to say is this word here, anelenthe, in my American accent of Greek, when he was taken up, okay? He was taken up seven years early, all right? There are 64 years remaining until the millennium is supposed to occur when he comes back to start the millennial kingdom, all right? So that's a real clever thing. Now, you know, it might really be 63, but I don't see how I can cut a syllable anywhere. So then that would be the meaning here. So now Luke is telling you, hi, I'm valuing all of this at the beginning of the year. Now Christ's birthday, though, is at the end of the Roman year and in the middle of, sort of in the middle of, the Jewish year. So 49 is like, well, on what fiscal? Is it the same fiscal year as this? And the answer is, I don't know. But the point to get out of this is here's your 49, okay? which is used in Daniel 9.4, which God repeats in explicit text in Daniel 9.26. And now you're beginning to get a sense of why God uses that number, okay? Which was also later used in Matthew 24.2 for the same year that Christ is talking here with the same idea. He's talking, he's giving commandments. Daniel 9 4 he was that's God's commandments and here's the word he's giving commandments to the apostles so you can see the tie is deliberate the meter is deliberate it evokes those those other passages and he's talking about the same idea Christ talking giving commandments to the disciples the apostles okay now, there's more to say about this, but then I'd have to get into other numbers, and I, I don't want to overburden you, okay? Because you'll notice, like, this is 82. Why isn't it 84? And there's, there's, there's answers to all those questions, but I don't know what they are yet. Just suffice it to say, is, oh, 49 is here, okay? So now we got to go to the next place, because I want you to see. Remember we saw then, also in Matthew 24, the 63, well, here it is again. Only this time it's got a slightly different meaning. In Matthew 25 and 24, just after um, 24-2, there was that text um, where he's saying, you see all this, and truly I tell you. That was the Matthew 24 passage, all right? But this is also 63, except that it's Acts 1. I mean, it's the Luke's Gospel. And he's talking about an event, ding, 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 that happened 63 years prior to the date that Luke writes it. So Luke is writing this in what we have to call 58 AD. Okay? And you, there's other ways to tell straight from the text, but just preview of coming attractions. He, the, the announcement to um, Zacharias that he's going to have a kid because his wife is barren, okay, um, that takes place in uh, Adar of 5 BC. That's when Mary gets pregnant. Well, actually, this is occurring with Elizabeth six months prior, but that's five, it's 5 BC. Elizabeth and Mary get pregnant in the same fiscal year, okay? 63 years prior to when Luke writes. 
but by using 63, because he could have he could have reworded this in Greek. You can change the word order, and the meaning would be the same. So to stress 63, he wants you to look at the other passages that have 63 in them. Okay, well, the other passages that have 63 in them are Genesis 1, 3, Psalm 90, verse 3, okay, Matthew 24, whatever the verse is that has Amen Lego Humin in it, because that it ends, the syllable count ends there at 63, which is basically about the the temple, all those temple stones are going to be down. So why is he tying all that to sterile Elizabeth? But clearly he is. You see that there's a deliberateness here. So then if you were like teaching then or studying the Bible then without all of our modern notions, you would have to go and look at all those passages and say, what does that have to do with Elizabeth? And I think I'll leave you to do that. That way you'll start to get used to thinking about 63 and 49. Okay? And what I want you to see, the most important thing, is that when you look up here at these first pages, all, you know, all of the New Testament, first chapters of the New Testament, and these sections of the Old Testament... I put the numbers in so you can search on the number and then go oh well what is that and then each one of these links is a document to text that looks just like what you saw but for each of these Bible books and then you can compare the words and the counts in those books and see what that tells you about Acts because it will peace out for now do your homework.